three uh, presenters go one right after the other. Then we will open the floor for questions um, once those presentations are complete. And then at the very end of our hour, we'll send you into some small groups that are organized by grade level. So you'll have a chance to uh, to talk to, to uh, students who, um, uh, to teachers who teach students of the same age. And so with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to our first presenter, Candace Stewart. Uh, and as Candace said a few minutes ago, she teaches at Dream Charter School. Thank you so much, Renee. Yes, um, I'm a middle school teacher. I teach five through eighth grade at Dream Charter School. It's a Title I school um, located in East Harlem. And just like you guys, it is just a building as we know. Um, so it, do you know, Renee, if I'm able to share my screen? You are, okay. yes. Excellent. So I kind of put this, well, one disclaimer, I have children, okay? So <laughs> if you hear some whams in the background, I apologize. I'm gonna do my best over it all. But um, yeah, you know how these things go. A lot that I can control and some things I can't, which goes you know, nicely into what this presentation is about. Um, everything written in pencil. It was actually something my principal said that I was like, you know, yeah, applause. Cause that's exactly what I would say this entire uh, experience is like. So like most of you, everything kind of shifted once we got the news. Before we got the news about uh, quarantine and in and, and our shifts, I had some big, big things going on. I, you know, we're all thinking about our spring art exhibitions, our shows, projects getting done, trying to prepare our students for the next level, portfolio development for kids who are going off into uh, high schools and everything just changed. And, and from that, we break off into advisory groups at my school. Um, so we get about seven or eight kids or so that we have to be very on top of. And I was like, okay, I have my advisory kids. There are seven of them that have all different kinds of situations going on at home and not. I have my own children who are quite young. One of my, my son is in school, but the other one, as you can hear, she's not. <laughs> and then, um, you know, my mother got sick actually from COVID during this time. So there had just been a lot of different things um, happening. But in all of that, um, I did shift my mindset thinking about, you know, the physical kids that I have in front of me, which are my two little cuties, very intelligent and also working on intelligence right there. Um, and then also my virtual kids now. So I'm only seeing parts of my students, kind of like you guys probably are. I'm seeing the ones who join my office hours and my Zoom sessions. I'm getting the emails from the kids who don't want to join my Zoom sessions, and then I'm only getting reports of children who complete or go for long weeks and stretches where they're not doing quite anything. So with all of that, um, I kind of changed my own mindset about this whole thing. And if you've ever um, heard about Carol Dweck's fixed mindset versus uh, growth mindset, we often push that on our children, and I ended up pushing that on myself, honestly. Um, I walked into my challenge with my mother being sick and me having to take care of my two little ones while also managing my advisory group and also making sure that I'm watching over my content for 200 plus students. Uh, I was like, whoa, this is, this is a lot for one person to handle. Um, but with that being said, I knew that I couldn't stay uh, fixed, right? I had to take this as a learning opportunity and really see the, the ebbs and flows of the situation. Um, and therefore, it, that mindset shift, it led me to reevaluate how I was approaching things, which I plan on taking a lot of this back into September. So the three things that I ended up changing were my perspective on goal setting. First of all, we can have goals for our kids, but they've got goals of their own. <laughs> so it only makes sense for us to design the goals around what they think they can achieve and uh and trust and believe in them and then i you know taught myself to to kind of be kinder to myself taking on two little ones and 
and having someone that you do love and you care for who is your support system um, degrade in front of you, it, there's a lot that I had to say, okay, like it's okay to take a health day. Um, you know, I can rep respond to emails, but it's okay to take a health day. Then I thought about my feedback. Now, the feedback that I get from students, uh, especially, they're so far and few in between, so I'm gonna honestly cherish them now. I wasn't before, I was kind of like, okay, kid, move to the side. But now I'm honestly like, okay, if, if, if there's something wrong with the platforms or the classworks that I've assigned for them, I'm open to hearing about how I can make them work. So I, I actually have one student who ends up joining my sessions and she gives me feedback on all my lessons. And then um, my academic design. I, with the responsibility of saying, it is okay to let go. It is okay to plan around the, the foreseen and the unforeseen. So that has helped me to create these four groups of, of kids. And I think that you guys might get something out of this and you're probably already doing this yourselves because we're, we're, we're master teachers. So I've got the artsy kids. These are the kids who they, they do whatever. You'll give them a post about anything. They got it. They'll go above and beyond. They join every Zoom session, even though they don't have to. They already did the artwork. It's, it's like, why do you want so much space time? Then we've got the overachievers who they'll complete all your assignments, right? They'll complete everything, but it's just to get the grade. They're not really being very creative. Then we've got the win motivated kids who they've got a few assignments, but I do have to send them a, an email or call them and get that one-on-one -on -one attention. And then for lack of better words, I've got the could care less crew. That's zero, zero accomplishments. And they, they're tough. With all that happening, I've decided to start to create lessons that are really um, feeding into who they are, or at least how they present themselves through this platform. So for my RC kids, I'm gonna do more flexibility with my submissions. I'm gonna give them an opportunity to submit additional side projects. I'm gonna go deeper. I'm definitely gonna go deeper with like prompting and questions and really figuring out who they are during this time. With my overachievers, I am going to start asking and seeking out their feedback more. And then I'm gonna push their art experience. If I know that they're going to finish everything on time, I'm going to give them that 80% or that 90% because they're gonna want 100%. And here's my plugin to try to get them to be more creative. And uh, it's, worked, it's worked with a few overachievers, definitely. And then I also wanna like listen to their stress because a lot of these images that they have about them like not being accountable, having to lay around, it's really interesting. So I wanna give them some relief. And then for my when motivated, I'ma compliment the crap out of them. I'm gonna keep loving them, provide choice, make it super simple and, and keep encouraging. And so for my could care less, I know you, you're, you're gonna kill me for this one, but I'm giving them a hundred for anything that they submit because I know that I'm gonna see these kids in September. Um, and I want a good relationship with them, in all honesty. Because at the end of the day, without, uh, without the school, we're just feeding into each other work and submission. I'm just assigning and they're submitting. So um, it, I'm just trying to figure out, it is okay to write things in pencil. And, and that's the mentality that I'm going forth with. Thank you, Renee. Excellent. Thank you so much. So let's turn straight away to our second presenter of the day. And remember that you are welcome to start posing questions in uh, the chat function if you'd like to do so, and we'll get to those later. Um, but let's turn the floor over to Angela Paris, who teaches at Riverdale Country School. Awesome. All right. Thank you. How's my volume? Great. Good? Okay. I went through an entire class apparently yelling at students um, and no one told me until the next day. Um, so <laughs> um, just a few things before um, I give you kind of uh, like a rundown of some intro um, exercises and projects um, is that we do meet on Zoom. We meet twice a week for 45 minutes um, kind of in person. And then uh, they have two um, independent sessions um, per week, both for 45 minutes um, to work on assignments. Um, so it's, it's kind of four, four times a week. Um, 
And just kind of for the sake of, you know, seeing things evolve over time uh, for one group of students, I'm just going to talk about projects for my drawing one class. It's a high school drawing one class, um, grades 10, 10 and 11. It's mostly 10 and 11. Um, so I really kind of approached this whole thing by saying to myself that I have like no control, none, right? I have zero control um, and, I, and I have to just let go of the outcomes. Um, so thinking about how we really just need to connect right now, um, we need to connect with ourselves, um, with each other, um, and we really kind of have to like stay present. And those are, those are big things, um, but you can kind of integrate them without anybody knowing. Um, and it, you know, for, for some students, not for all, but for some students and for me, um, it's, it's helpful, right? Um, so this is not business as usual. Um, and there's a lot that we're working through mentally, physically. Um, so that's kind of my philosophy going into this. Um, I'm thinking mostly about kind of fluidity and flexibility in everything that we do. Um, being able to just change on the fly and be okay with that, right? Even, even if it's something I prepared, um, just, just to kind of improvise and say, okay, uh, Great, we'll do that. So for the next class, do you know, we'll, and we get this, right? Because they're all muted, even though I continually ask them, unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Um, and so that's kind of how it goes. Um, I really wanted to retain the group dynamic, kind of impossible, but I, but I really want to try, right? Especially with this group that I'm talking about. Um, every group dynamic is going to be different, but with, with this group, um, it's hard, right? So, so they kind of filter into class in the same way. Um, some, some kids are late still, and so I like ask them for a late note and folks chuckle. Um, I'll talk about my cat or um, you know, my plants. I, I kind of tend to talk about things that I would be talking about in school, even if it makes zero sense in my home, right? And so it just kind of like lightens the mood. I wanna get folks um, laughing and smiling at the beginning of class. Um, I really kind of feel like my role right now is to, to be there for them and to just facilitate moments for them to connect with their process. Like that's like the big overarching thing. Um, so things that I was thinking about when I structure the projects that I'm gonna share, um, feeling grounded, reflection, acknowledging stuff that's coming up, um, Trying to stay present, trying is the key, right? Always coming back to this idea of being present. Um, and then letting go of the outcome. And like, these are, these are like big things, right? These are, these are big things, but I just feel like this moment especially um, calls for all of these things kind of work together. Um, sometimes we're gonna, you know, swing and miss and, and then we just, we just kind of hope every day <laughs> that, that we can provide a little bit of you know, grounding, it, it's not, and it's not really that, that we're doing it, it's that we're, we're providing the opportunity for them to do it, right? Um, so the first project that we did um, in, in kind of person, right, on Zoom, um, it was something I kind of call, it's like this combo of meditative writing and automatic drawing. So I set a timer for 10 minutes and we all just wrote. It was, it was mindful meditative writing, right? So the prompts that I gave them, things like, um, how are you feeling right now? How did you wake up today? Like, what's coming up for you today? Um, what's important to you right now in this moment, right? So it, it's important for them also to know that I'm never gonna read this. Um, and in the drawing portion, I'm never gonna look at it, right? So this stuff is only, so I took a short break. And then I set another timer for 10 minutes. The prompt now was just to draw automatically. We talked a little bit about improv. Um, we, we've talked about improvisation before, this idea of like free playing. So they were, they were a little bit um, you know, knowledgeable about that concept. And so the only thing that I told them that they had to do, like this was my one demand, was that they couldn't let their pen or pencil stop moving. That was it. They just, they had to keep going. I don't, I don't care what they draw. 
um, they, ju they just kind of have to keep going. And actually materials, I, I, I haven't mentioned that yet. I, I tried so hard before we left, right? And this, this goes back to that, that point of like, I am not in control. No one is in control right now, right? So the materials, um, some students left with materials that we had collected. Other students didn't have the opportunity to go home with materials. Um, some materials, you know, they, they take left turns somewhere and, and the body of the person takes a right hand turn and those two things don't end up in the same house. <laughs> Um, and then other folks, you know, have been displaced for one reason or the other. Like there, there are so many things, there are so many variables. And so pencil, pen, we all know, like we start with what we have, we start where we are, we have something to draw with, we have something to draw on, right? So that, that's kind of like also the premise um, for every single project that we're going to do right now. Um, so you know, it's interesting, after the automatic drawing, after this kind of meditative writing and automatic drawing, um, some students, um, you know, came to me afterwards and they said that time was really helpful. Like, it was this free allotted time and, and they were just really happy to have it. So this is something that, you know, you can use frequently, you can pull it into any class. Um, students either love it or maybe they, they don't care for it. And that's kind of something too, actually. It's, it, that's like a worthy thing to go through as well. So I just feel like there's a lot of value. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you all, if I can. All right, is it, is it something? Did it work? Not yet. Not yet. All right, let's, let's see. Try it one more time. There we go. And all right, so one of the first assignments that we did, do I have about a minute left, I think? Yes. Okay. Um, so one of the first assignments we did, you're, you're looking at our Schoology screen. This is how I, I send out my, um, my assignments. Um, and it's, it's basically a still life, right? Documenting experience. This, you know, as opposed to going home and writing and journaling about your, your experiencing, like, you know, like in the home, um, in quarantine, we're documenting images now. What are those things that you maybe have overlooked? Or maybe you drink a lot of tea now that you're home and there are mugs, you know, lined up. Like, that this is that project, right? Um, the results were really beautiful. 45 minutes, pencil, sketchbook, super open-ended. The idea is really just simply to document your experience. And then one more that I wanna share quickly is foot studies. We talked a lot about feeling grounded. What does it mean to feel grounded? Um, where do our feet take us? When was the last time you thanked your feet, right? When was the last time we honored our feet and how can we feel like grounded through our feet? So, so we did foot studies. Um, it's kind of sad, we were supposed to do some life drawing. We had to cancel the models, of course, um, but this was our way to kind of reconnect with the body. And the results were absolutely magical. Five minute foot studies, so detailed so much attention to detail like they they you know they really kind of did what i what i asked them to do it was really fantastic to see pen pencil and then lastly again this is what they're seeing on schoology and i can share these these slides with folks if they'd like um, but a 45 minute foot study so the same subject but now with far more focus. And, and again, just another way to kind of stop, connect, and, and be present. That's really the, the goal. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Angela. So let's directly turn the floor over to our third presenter and Veronica Giardonella. I'm sure I sort of massacred your last name there, Veronica. No, no. 
actually really accurate. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Who teaches at the High School of Telecommunication Arts and Technology. Background, uh, I work in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn at a Title I school. Um, I it's my fourth year teaching and I teach studio art courses and advanced art. So I have about 150 students. Um, and the things that have been really working for me and a lot of you already said it is just to really be flexible and I try to like put myself in their shoes because a lot of seniors lost that on graduation and prom and they're just they're really down so I've learned throughout this whole process to just kind of let go and if if they're trying if they're creating if I'm getting their mind off of what's happening that's my main goal so I'm going to share my screen with you and just show you like the three best things I've figured out during this craziness so just let me know if you could see my screen. Can you guys see it? Awesome. So um, my school um, posts twice a week. So we post on Tuesday and Thursday. And on Friday, we do like an enrichment activity. So the kids that are caught up, they can do the activity. The kids that need that extra day, um, they use Friday to do that. So we all use Google Classroom as our platform. And I wanted to kind of keep things simple. So I do everything on Google Docs and it has, um, it, it lets you give a copy to every student. So I really love that. So I, I always make a little worksheet just so they know everything's on one page and I add visuals and video. And um, I think this, for this lesson, I was trying to have them look at things in a different way. Um, so I had them look at, you know, a piece of wood and see the bear, um, see different things in different objects. And I try to throw in different artists um, and it kind of shocks them because I always get comments um, from them that they've never seen anything like this. So just to give you a really quick example, I try to throw in videos as much as I can. And even though they can just look this stuff up, um, this artist used objects in all kinds of different ways. And although you think they might Google the artist and look at examples, they probably won't. So I throw it in the video, they see it, they have time to process, think about their own ways that they can do something like this. Um, so at the bottom, I always have like a drawing activity and I have like a baby rubric and I have a teacher example. And I said they could use any object they wanted um, for this lesson. And I think my favorite thing that I've discovered, and it really works incredible, is how doodles Google folder. So I just created slides. And like, this is the most life-changing thing, I think, for me. And I think it might be the most helpful for you if this works. Um, but my students open up this folder, and it says period one, two, four, six, and seven. And they just click on the class that they have. Um, and they each create their own slide. And it's literally like a visual sketchbook. And yes, one kid could erase every slide and ruin it, but um, I kind of asked them, you know, be careful what you're doing. And I could go back in the history and fix anything. So one time someone changed the theme for everyone's background and it was such an easy fix. So this is what they see. They see my examples. This is, these are all the projects we've done so far. Um, we've gotten to some character design and mood boards. And it's just such an easy way for me to see what they're doing. So this is an example of one of my students and that project you just saw, he used a paper clip as a skateboard, as a sword. But it's just such a, it's like life changing to see, I could scroll through and see every kid's artwork for that week or two weeks. Um, and I've, figured out a way for them to comment on each other. So if you look at the bottom of the slide here, um, I mean, sometimes they talk really slang, relaxed, but at least they're interacting with each other's artwork and they're praising each other. And where normally I would do a critique where it would be like a grow and a glow, um, we're just focusing on the positives. Um, so this was just like a little comment that one of his friends said, talking about symmetry and balance of these objects, similar to Andy Goldsworthy's nature. Um, and then just seeing their writing about their work, it kind of tells me a little bit about what they're going through, um, their personalities. And 
I have been using a lot of different platforms to get different resources. So like Facebook groups and Instagram and the Getty Museum Challenge was one of the most successful projects. Um, I know so many art teachers that have done this and it is just pure joy and it gets them moving and using their bodies and, and relevant. And um, so this is one of my favorite um, projects that they've done. Even the students that, that you know, don't love to draw. This, they didn't have to draw. They got their dog involved. They got their siblings involved. Um, so that was just, just like another really amazing part of um, online teaching. And I try to communicate with them. I leave comments. I think this has actually shown me a lot more about their personality than when we're in person, which was shocking to figure out. Um, and with their slide ground, it's just been a creative outlet, I think. And if a student doesn't understand a project, they have a thousand different examples of students' work. So it's been, this has been my favorite part, I think, just seeing their visual sketchbooks. Um, other than that, I just wrote our Friday enrichment for our Fridays. Um, I made this slideshow of just examples of things that they can do when they when they have on Friday if they have extra time so like painting with coffee and recreating baby pictures but just giving them choice really makes such a such a difference because it's something they want to do um, and they have a lot of voice and say I try to check in with them so like this is a quick example of something I had on the bottom of a worksheet and it was just like how are you doing what do you want to see um, one of the students here wrote um, I really want to design characters and that's what we did multiple kids said it so I said great we're gonna look into position and posture um, so I really try to do what would um, benefit them but also would be fun for them um, and last but not least I know that a lot of art teachers work alone in a school like being the only art teacher so I think one of the most important things for my mental health is like posting my student work on Instagram but seeing what other art teachers are doing and like constantly talking to other art teachers because it can be a lonely road and I think this crazy quarantine times has definitely connected me to more teachers which has been wonderful um, but that's that's all I got thank you Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you to the three of you. Those were really just fantastic to see. Um, so I noticed that there are a couple of, uh, of questions in the chat. Um, and uh, Tim asks whether you'll, you're willing, you might put those slides in the shared Google folder. That would be wonderful if you could. Um, but Hannah, I'm wondering if you'd like to pose your question. Sure. I was just wondering um, more details about the slides for the classes. If each, um, just as a small technical question, if each student made a new slide for every project or if they continue to add to the same slide. It seemed like some slides had multiple projects on it. Um, just like how you're structuring that exactly. So, I, I mean, it was a learning curve. The first, um, the first week um, they were I didn't really specify. So some kids put it all on one slide, some kids made multiple slides. So then the second week, I have them put all the, all the assignments on the first slide, the second week on the second slide. So right now they have about four or five slides each. Um, I try to keep them the same color, but sometimes if it gets a little too crazy, I'll go in and I'll combine a couple of their slides. Um, but right now they have about four each. So every week they get a new slide, depending on how big or small they make the images. So it's easy to fix either way. Great, thank you. And I see another question for Veronica here from Pilar. Pilar, would you like to pose your question? Sure, I just wanted to know if you also do live sessions with the kids, so just post in Google Classroom. I have um, meeting, like hours, like two hours a day where I'm open and on chat, but a lot of them don't come. I've probably met with one or two kids, um, but our school's looking into making more mandatory on, face-to-face, -face, um, but no, right now we don't do it at all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, wonderful. So let's open the floor to questions to any of our three presenters. And if you would go ahead and use the raise your hand, um, raise your hand uh, thingamabob uh, function, and um, we'll go from there.
I'm guessing that a lot of you have, oh, here we go, Caroline, you jump in. Yeah, I was just wondering about the Instagram posts because I've been looking at them and enjoying them. Do you pick the work or do they post them or how does that work? I I post, I, I choose like my favorites, but I always ask their permission because sometimes they're hesitant to let me post on my Instagram, but I'll be like, can I please put this on my art teacher Instagram? And usually they say yes, but I just pick randomly. Great, thank you. Um, Tim, do you want to jump in? Yeah, well, thank you, the three of you, um, uh, Candice, and Angela, and um, uh, Veronica. Uh, my question is for Veronica. Um, the, you mentioned that sometimes students come and will change around something or, or um, you know, change a background, um, which, you know, it's, it's a, a, a simple fix for you, you I think you, you said, but I'm just wondering like other kind of troubleshooting things where you have students who, for whatever reason, will kind of go in and, and sabotage or, you know, not trying to be too negative, but uh, I tried something like this in uh, Padlet, but um, how do you kind of feel that or negotiate that with, with your students? So luckily, nobody's done any sabotaging the the person that accidentally changed the background of the colors that was completely an accident so thank god that's been the case but I really just wrote in parentheses like please don't mess with other students artwork um I didn't have to threaten them or anything but you can see who does what in the history so I guess I've just been really lucky with it but um I just kind of in parentheses wrote like, please don't mess with anyone's slides, just focus on your five slides. And that's really all I said. Great, thank you. Um, Carolyn, jump in again. Yeah, I'm just wondering, we just had to write report cards for the third quarter. Unfortunately, people had been around um, for much of the third quarter, but for the fourth quarter, what do you, and, and this is for anybody who has any thoughts on this, what are you thinking in terms of assessment? I mean, my feeling is if you showed up and you did the work, you're getting an A, and I am, I'm pretty good with that. But um, I don't know, what are people's thoughts on that? I mean, I guess you can tell from mine, I'm kind of differentiating as much as possible. There's, um, you know, there are students who they've, they've done absolutely nothing. And if they do something, I'm just trying my best to encourage them and, and love them virtually. Um, and so if they see 100 on one assignment and they start to add more, I, I'm just using that as like bait right now. Um, for, um, you know, the really artsy kids that I've got, I'm just constantly giving them opportunities for extra credit, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, our grades, I think, are going to be inputted um, and be, you know, kind of like locked in in like two weeks. So there's there's very little that they can actually do to like, you know, change their situation um, unless they've got some miraculous things up their sleeves. Oh, dear. <laughs> Christy, you want to jump in? Thank you. Um, going back to the slides, um, sorry, I hope this isn't annoying to be focused on this too long, but um, I know, Angela, you had said, you know, one of your goals was to kind of retain the dynamic of the class. And I'm just wondering, for those of us who don't have like the class time anymore, that's kind of lost to us. But um, I'm wondering if the slides, if do they, are they able to comment on each other's work? Um, and if if they're able to, do they do the whole dynamic? So I made it an assignment an assignment to comment on at least two uh, students' posts for one of them to kind of test it out. And some of them used the insert comment, so that was great. Um, and some of them just wrote on the bottom of the slide. And I was fine, flexible, like either way. But I think in the future when I do this, I would want them to respond in some way because I don't even know if they're going back and reading any comments. Like I, that was just something very new that I tried, but they can totally comment on each other's work, which was just great to see them even communicating and giving some positive, positive feedback. Angela, did you want to speak to that as well? Yeah, um, the, the feedback that students give each other, um, 
you know, of course has totally changed. And my students, um, you know, also populate a Google document for each kind of exercise or assignment that we do. Um, and I've, I've done, I've, I've done a couple of different things. So I've, we've gone through what I kind of just call silent critiques, where the Google presentation is populated. We come in, uh, you know, to our meeting, um, and then I'll hang out on one slide for about a minute, and students will write, you know, um, some constructive feedback. They'll write something that they find really successful. They'll write something that they find really interesting or maybe something that they wanna, you know, kind of pull from. And it's kind of quick, but we'll go through each slide this way, each, each person's work this way. Um, and then since it's written down, that, that gives them the opportunity to share verbally with, them, with each other later on. And then there's less um, like silence because they've already written it down. Um, so that's one way that we've done it. And then we've also, and again, this is, we're, we're in person though, right? In person. Um, and then we've also just kind of done, you know, kind of a more traditional critique where we, we look at the slide um, and then have that conversation. I take notes and then, you know, if, if, uh, if the students, like I, I share the notes, so. Wonderful, thank you. Jennifer, do you wanna jump in? Hi. Um, so I was wondering if anyone tried anything that was asyn asynchronous. So I was thinking of maybe like showing a PowerPoint and then recording my voice over it or um, maybe filming a demonstration of a technique and then recording that. But I, um, I'm actually on a leave this semester and I'm trying to prepare for September. So I'm wondering how to go about doing So that's the way we're doing it. We teach, um, me and my co-teacher, we teach at uh, pre-K all the way to fifth grade. And all we do is film our hands doing that technique or doing a project just with a lot of videos and examples. And then we post to Google Classroom. We have a only art Google Classroom. We find that a lot of students participate. We have like a whole range. The RC ones, I think, Candace, the way you describe it was the best. There's some that post one thing, and I'm like, this is the most amazing thing you've ever done in the world. We use, I use this program called Adobe Spark, and I can record books on there. I can do demonstrations, and then I can upload it, and I can add um, some writing. And you can do it in sections instead of having to film the whole thing um, using, uh, and then videotaping it, and then posting it to YouTube. That's work for me, um, but again, they're little, so they need parents to help them all the time to find the information and to gather the materials. Materials is another thing we struggle with. So we do a lot of recycles, go around the house, do a gathering, what can you find, what can you make with that? And, and, uh, but that's Great. all that we're doing. Thank you. Well, with